Okay, um, uh, my name is Lilith Blockett. Um, I was, sorry, I'm 20 years old. I was born in Midlandtown, PA, which is like a small rural, rural community. Um, I currently work at Nicho at Chipotle in Chambersburg. Um, I'm a Caucasian American and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I don't particularly like follow or practice like an organized religion, but um, it's just not something that like I'm focusing on in my life right now <laughs> or I really want to. So um, I don't really put like a label on my religion, but I had a lot of like Christian and Catholic influences when I was like growing up. Um, a lot of my family members are Christian or Catholic. So like I learned a lot about it as a kid and like I went to youth group and stuff. Um, I, I don't really know what my, I guess my social, like, economic class is, like, middle class. I don't have any physical or mental disabilities. Um, as for, like, the definitions, um, I pre-wrote these down because I will forget all, like, words. <laughs> um, for prejudice, I wrote, um, like, not liking something or someone without reason, uh, discrimination, um, unfair treatment of others based off of the group that they like fall in, like fall within. Systematic racism is racism in the, like in systems that we have today. So like in laws and in health, in, like in healthcare too. Um, bigotry, um, like being stuck in your own ways or ideas about groups of people and not really being open to other ideas or changing your ideas. White privilege, uh, privileges that are given to you at birth as a white person that you didn't earn. Bias, um, a judgment you have that can sometimes be unfair. Stereotype, uh, type, sorry, ideas and beliefs about a group of people that are believed to be true regardless of whether or not they are. Oppression, the unfair treatment of others. When and how did you first learn that there were different racial and ethnic groups in this country? I think I learned this like really young. Uh, I personally come from like, it's not a very diverse area. We live kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's mostly white people, but we do have a lot of um, different ethnic groups where I'm from. So like, I knew that that was a thing and I have um, family members that belong to different ethnic groups than I do. And a lot of very close family friends that are in the same boat so I was kind of just always they were just always there like I I knew that they existed um when did you become aware of people being treated differently because of their race ethnicity gender sexual orientation um probably when I was in elementary school although like I did come from an area where like there were a bunch of different ethnic groups I also come from a very conservative area and people aren't very open to change or um, differences where I'm from and people are very open <laughs> about their racism and their biases and stuff like that. And like, they're very discriminatory. And like some people would just be uh, kind of open about it and just say things that they definitely probably shouldn't have. So I feel like it was something I learned really, really young is that um, some people are treated differently based off of like these groups that they fall within. Um, also just personally like especially for gender and stuff like that like being a young girl and like experiencing things like there's just super weird like little things that will be like oh you can't do that you're a girl or you can't do this you're a girl or you can only do this because you're a girl like it's just little things that like i think a lot of women experience um how did you learn about it or uh, okay, I think I learned I learned a lot about it through my mom. My mom is like a very, I guess, liberal type uh, woman, and she cares a lot about social justice issues and making sure that people are treated fairly and things like that. My brother specifically, um, I don't really want to disclose exactly what like physical or like mental disability he has, but. Um, you know that he was treated differently based off of his and I learned really young that like people are just gonna be mean and hateful for very dumb little reasons and my mom was 
very sure to teach us about why we shouldn't be and how we should act and how we should talk to people, um, things like that, I think, which was really important in my childhood. What was the racial and ethnic composition of your family? My family is mostly white. Um, actually, but like especially like my close family. I know there are family members of mine that are like very far back on like my mom's side that are of different ethnicities. I just am not entirely sure which ones I'm not close with them. I don't really know them. The neighborhood you grew up in. Um, the neighborhood I grew up in, there was a lot of people it's mostly just white people, um, but I like, especially the people who live like outside of town, it's like all white people who like live on the farms and stuff like that. But like I lived in town, so a lot of, um, we had a lot of people who were Dominican and Puerto Rican, and that's who a lot of my friends were. They were white or of those two. Uh, at present, describe, Oh, sorry, I missed, like, elementary school was the same way. All those kids, same thing, like, attended my school. At present, describe the racial and ethnic composition of your family, neighborhood you currently live in, the university you're attending. Um, I still think it's, like, mostly white. I mean, there's a lot of white people, <laughs> or Caucasian people, but I think now that I'm in college, like, I'm experiencing and, like, seeing a lot of very different people with all different types of eth ethnicities in all of these, like, um, in all of these places. Same thing with my coworkers, my primary service providers. Um, at present, describe um, the racial and ethnic composition. Oh, I'm rereading the same thing. What makes you feel comfortable with people of different marginalized groups are uncomfortable? This includes race, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, ability, and or age. Um, I think, like I said before, like my mom was very, very sure to make sure that um, we grew up with the influences that she wanted us to have. So like that we grew up um, knowing that we should treat all people with respect and regardless of what they may look like or how they might identify and that you shouldn't judge people based off of these little things or like the groups that they fall into but based off of the content of their character and how that is like the most important thing. Um, which I think was a really great thing that was instilled in me at like a very young age and I think it made me like a better person um, but also like especially with like religion and stuff like that like my mom was also very certain to like make sure that she told us that she wasn't going to like force a religion on us but it was going to let us explore our religion and find what we believed in in our own ways which I thought was really really cool but I also got some like type of um, influences from family, other family members and stuff like that. I mean, like I went to church a few times, like I used to go to youth group, all those kinds of different things. And I mean, I've also just been around a lot of people who have different religions, um, which is kind of cool. And I got to learn a lot about it, which honestly just made me feel a lot more comfortable. I mean, I. I think the thing is, is like I don't know a ton about a bunch of different religions, but I try my best to be mindful or learn as much as, as I can about it. Like sexual orientation, ability, and or age. Um, I, like for sexual orientation or people, like um, things like that, I have a lot of, um, people who uh, are in my family that fall within the LGBTQ like community, I personally fall within it. So I, I mean, even like when I was younger when I didn't particularly know exactly like where I fell in the spectrum of um, like sexual orientations and things like that. Um, like I was still like surrounded by people who were open about their sexual orientations and things like that. And I was really lucky to have a family who, um, and even my extended family, which is surprising considering some of them are not the most open or they're very conservative um, compared, especially compared to like my more immediate family, like my mom and my, um, my stepdad and my siblings who all live with me. But um, they were very accepting of like my cousins who identified um, that way, which I thought was really cool, but also probably made me feel 
way more comfortable. Uh, when was the last time you talked about race or diversity? In what context did that conversation occur? With whom? I think the last time would probably have been in class. I know we've had conversations with it or about it or honestly with my roommate. Uh, my roommate and me are both very into like social justice type issues or uh, talking about those kinds of things, especially with us both being social work majors and both being in this class. Um, we just, we have a lot of conversations about it in our room sometimes, um, especially when we're talking about this class. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what probably the last conversation was, but probably within those, that context. Um, I feel like I have like conversations about race relatively often. Um, especially with my family and things like that. We care a lot about those kinds of things, especially in the town that we like grew up in or like we have been in for a really long time. Although we are trying to like leave it because <laughs> we don't particularly enjoy being here. But um, we both are, I mean, we all like participate in things like um, Black Lives Matter marches and things like that. And, um, I think like that is why, especially over the summer and during the time that like, um, especially like through 2020 to now when um, these are really big conversations about race and like the Black Lives Matter movement have been coming up and we had a lot of conversations about that and why it's important and things like that. I mean, feelings wise, I mean, I, it, I don't know, it not particularly like hits close to home with me, I guess. I mean. These like types of issues don't particularly affect me, but I know and like personally are friends with people that it does affect, and I think it's really important as like a white friend, somebody who's definitely have has white privilege, um, to be standing up for the people who like don't. So I don't know. I guess like those are like the kind of feelings that I have about it. Um, how informed do you consider yourself to be about the history of racism? And the struggle for civil slash human rights. To what extent did you learn or study about this? I do not consider myself an expert in any way, but I do think that I'm pretty like well informed, especially within the last year or two, where like I really feel like I've I've done a lot of learning and I've done a lot of like checking my own privilege and why um, these things are important to know, because I feel like it's like a touchy subject for a lot of people nowadays, but especially white people, like, especially, like, people are, like, really afraid to just have conversations about these types of things, but I feel like I've been using it kind of as an opportunity to teach myself more about what's right, what's right and what's wrong and, like, the past and, like, things like that and why these things happen and, um, the best way to, like, not fix it, but, like, I'm trying to think of a word for it, um, it's the best way to, like, bring it up and talk about it, um, attitudes, of, in general, what do you think about the experience of people who are marginalized, um, why do you think, what do you think about how they are perceived or treated, this is, there's a growing for if you think that there is a need for this, why or why not? Um, I, okay, so I will personally never experience the same things that, I'm gonna use the, um, I have a friend who is, um, who's mixed. She is, um, her dad is, um, his parents were white and um, African American, and her mother is um, Asian. So she personally, though, like, um, in the way that she explained it to me, like, she is very like, um, like black presenting and looks more like her dad than she does her mom. So growing up, she had like a lot of issues that she shared with me and like explained them to me. So. Um, I'm gonna just kind of like focus on that one since that's the first one that kind of came to mind. But um, I think the experiences of before something like 
especially like marginalized groups or something that you can like really learn from if you take the time to like step um like step away and kind of like notice your own privilege as a white person like personally as a white person like stepping away and like realizing okay i am white i have these privileges and like why and then taking a minute to really learn and understand um the experiences of people who are not white who experience um all kinds of things like racism um i think it's kind of unfair how people are perceived or treated she was always kind of like viewed as like more loud or um i guess she was like always saying that like people just are scared more scared to come up to her because they think she's gonna be mean or something like that and she has always felt like it it wasn't based off of the content of her character or the way that she um came across in like other ways other than really like just her race or the way that she was like shown like visibly seen by other people um sorry i lost my spot uh there's a growing focus on multiculturalism in the united states do you think there's a need for this why are we not i definitely think so i think it's really important to start understanding and focusing on things like that i don't know how else to put it uh, what are your thoughts and opinions on immigration and public assistance? Uh, okay, as for immigration, I personally think it's like a very weird thing that um, in modern day we put so much like, um, so much worth on just people coming into a different part of land. <laughs> that sounds really, really dumb when you say it all out, but <laughs> um, I don't see an issue with people from different places coming here. I think, I, and I did a lot of, I remember um, in like high school doing like a thing where we talked about it. I did a speech class and we talked about like what makes America great. And I remember talking about like, there's just this really great thing about America being like a melting pot, things like that. I'm using America as an example, although like immigration is everywhere, but it just specifically here since I live here. Um, but, um, uh, it's like this really great thing that it's this melting pot and stuff like that and people love to talk about how that's something that makes America great but then people are so inclined to like have these terrible opinions on immigration and personally I I think if this is a place where someone can come and live a better life or this is where someone wants to live I don't see a problem with it I understand like rules and regulations to keep people safe or to just keep things in control but I personally don't I think allowing immigration is important and that is what will continue to make our country great um public assistance I I think there's a lot of people in this world who are born with really unfair advantages especially when it comes to money um which is what I'm kind of thinking of immediately but uh, Public assistance is something that I think just really evens the playing field for some people and I think it's important and if those things weren't there, those people would have a lot harder of a time. Like it's not a competition, but like living amongst these other people who have a lot more privileges than they do. Um, affirmative action. I don't really like have much of an opinion on affirmative action. I don't have any like problems with it, I guess, but and I know it exists and I have no issues with it. I think it's important, I guess, even. Um, I don't really know how else to like speak about it. Racial profiling, I don't think that's okay. <laughs> um, like I said with my mom, like being this really great influence in my life, like she always taught me that you shouldn't judge people based off of the color of their skin, but the content of their character and that was like the biggest thing that she always said. She always said it like that too, but it was always the content of their character, not the way that they look. And uh, I don't know, I think that that's really important. And unfortunately, a lot of other people don't hold that value or don't check themselves like regularly to make sure that they're not doing it, like racially profiling people. And I think it's important that like, especially for white people, that you like that we start doing that and making sure that we aren't judging people unfairly 
based off of the way that they look instead of the way that they act or the way that they treat other people or like whatever they're doing. Um, uh, white privilege, I know white privilege exists. I know that as a white person, I have a lot of privileges. There are a lot of things that are given to me or that I have just like kind of like a step ahead in life just based off of the color of my skin that like, and I will never understand um, the types of things that other groups of individuals will ever feel. In your opinion, would you describe the representation of the following groups in the news or media? Uh, how would you describe the representation in the entertainment media? Um, I think, okay, like as a child, I definitely, I don't know if I noticed it as a kid, but as much as I like notice it now, but like the media that I consumed as a child was very like whitewashed. It was a lot of white people and that's just how it always was. And I feel like I never questioned it just because it was never like something that was brought up to me also because I was a child. But um, I think nowadays, not, it's not perfect. It's definitely not something that's perfect. It's something that still needs to be worked on. It is showing more um, representation in medias and things like that. But um, I think as I grow older, I'm definitely noticing that it's growing and that there's a lot more um, representation in like the media and stuff like that, which I think is really important. I think that the um, people are starting to understand why it's important and they're um, focusing on making sure that representation is being used. But I still think it needs like a lot of, um, a lot of work. Um, I lost my point. Um, have you ever thought about your own race, skin color, sexual orientation, age, religion, based perspective? What does it mean to you? Um, I have. I feel, I feel like I think about all of these things at least sometimes. Um, my own race and skin color, like I said, like I feel like I've grown up in, I've had this wonderful privilege of being able to like grow up in a family that makes sure that I am checking myself and making sure that I'm being a good person and I am not treating other people unfairly, which I think is really great. Um, so I do think about my own race and my own skin color and how that has affected my life and how things could be different if I didn't look the way that I did. Um, my sexual orientation, I don't particularly share my sexual orientation with a lot of people. It's something that I've recently kind of come to accept and like, I don't know. I also am just like in a, rela in a relationship with a um, straight man. So um, to like the naked eye, or, like to people around me, if I'm not like showing it like or like saying it to other people or like saying it out loud or sharing it with them on social media or like in person like to the naked eye like people definitely think that I am a straight woman so I know what it means to be a person that falls within this group but I also understand that I really don't get what other people go through because I don't look like I fall within that. Um, I think a person of my age, what does it mean to be a person of, I'm not entirely sure how to answer that one, but like, I get, what does it mean to be a person of your age? In the United States, I guess, I don't know, I feel like maybe, I guess ageism is a thing, and that people are kind of like, um, discriminatory towards different ages based off of, like, preconceived, like, ideas, or things like that, but, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm at this weird age where people either expect me to be a lot more than what I am, or they expect a lot less of me, um, especially like where from where I'm like living um religious like faith perspective I like I said I'm not really religious so I don't really understand that part 
uh, how has it imp impacted your life? Uh, I feel, like I said before, I feel like my race, um, oh, I missed ability. I'm also like an able-bodied person, so I feel like that's also something that like, I, I'm never gonna have to worry about, and that's something that I also like will never truly like understand, but um, I, um, I know that all of these things and all of um, the way that I present to like other people is something that is going to affect me positively, but it's really unfortunate that it affects other people negatively because I get this like positive outcome out of it and I'm not doing anything. Like I'm not trying to be anything specific when it comes to these specific things. Uh, what would be the consequences you cost of acting against the is, uh, oh, isms with um, family, friends, at school, at work. Um, do you currently challenge the isms? If so, how? If not, why? Okay. Um, I definitely think that I do this. However, some of my family does not like it, especially like my extended family. Like my grandparents are, um, they are definitely working and definitely getting better at being a lot more understanding and accepting and kind of working their way out of these preconceived ideas that they've kind of grown up with and have always been viewed as like acceptable for them and the people they've been around. Uh, but I'm like constantly bringing up with my grandparents, like we have conversations with them all the time about why we can't say certain things, why we can't like, like just talk about people the way that they talk about people because it's rude or it's racist or it's um, homophobic, etc. And why it's important to know these things and um, why it's important to treat people with respect and dignity. Um, I don't know if I do it so much at school, um, but like I definitely do it with my friends as well. Um, a great example is I'm like in a sorority on campus and um, one girl in my sorority who I'm really, really close with is our um, diversity, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, chair, like VP of, um, of all of that in our sorority. And she works really, really hard to make sure that we are all being very inclusive and we are like using words that are um, offensive or unfair or um, things like that. And I really think it's interesting. Like I get to help with that in a way is like, making sure that I'm not doing it obviously and like making sure my friends are doing it and that if I hear something of some sort we make sure that we report it and we talk about why it's important not to do that and we talk about the consequences of our actions and things like that. <laughs> um, the interview experience, what was it like to answer these questions? I think that these are all questions that I've definitely answered in the past, but I think it's important to answer these kinds of questions, especially especially about race and like what we can do to um, what we could do to like kind of bring to that conversation. Um, what questions surprised you? What questions would you add or leave out if given the chance? Um, I don't feel like any questions surprised me. I um, these are all, like I said, these are all questions I feel like I've answered in the past, like just either to myself or to my family or to my friends, uh, just in conversations that I've had in the past. Um, but um, I feel like the only questions that I maybe would like leave out if given the chance is like, I don't feel comfortable answering certain questions like about myself. Um, just because like they're, they're private for me and I, I personally don't like answering them sometimes. I just don't feel like it's other people's like business, I guess. That's the only thing I could ever think of. Um, what questions did you find particularly helpful or difficult to answer? Um, I don't think I found anything difficult to answer or maybe not helpful. I, I guess it's helpful to think about certain things like these and, um, but I don't think I have a particular one. Um, that's pretty much it, I guess. I think that's all my all my questions. Um, well, that's everything then.